The series is tied, but with a four-game sample size, Kirsten and I are still feeling pretty good about the Wild's chances to move on and out of the first round for the first time since 2015. Plus, Kirill Kaprizov will start a scoring heater beginning in Game 5. As always, we're created by New Boy Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 174. Celebrate your favorite Minnesota sports teams and moments with SodaStick.com. Relive the Met Center chairs, the Metrodome push, and so much more with unique and quality garb found only at SodaStick. Don't forget to add code BARDOWNBEAUTIES at checkout for 15% off all of your purchases. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? What's going on? Recording this Monday at noon ahead of Game 5 in Dallas, trying to give you guys up-to-date content. Um, Kirsten, right now, series tied 2-2. Two to two. How do you feel about going into Dallas? It now guarantees you and I some extra money because a Game 6 comes back here next week. But how are you feeling in general about the series tied 2-2? Two two? Are you surprised at all with this or what are initial thoughts as the Minnesota wild and Dallas stars have evened things up here in round one. Yeah. I mean, first off, I'm not surprised. I think I did kind of have the inkling that the wild could have taken last night's game four, especially mainly just after seeing how they dominated Friday night, opening up their home series for game three. Um, I was super impressed by the way they played that night, but realistically the wild, they weren't going to win three straight, not in the postseason. Um, we've seen glimmers of it in the regular season, but as we know, postseason, whole different monster and especially Dallas, they're a good team, but the wild were not going to win three straight. We knew that. Um, unfortunately game four was that game that they ended up dropping. I'm hopeful as they head into Dallas for game five, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And one of the biggest reasons for that is our penalty kill sucks. Like it is atrocious. Second worst penalty kill in all of teams competing in this year's postseason. So yeah. that is one of, I mean, it goes alongside with what we've been saying about the defense all year. Right. And penalty kill being a glimmer that is just showing a lot of weak spots that we have. Yeah, I and special teams in general, power play also needs to get their shit together. Let's be frank. Like, and it's it, you know, again, we don't want to harp too much on what's happened in the past. I want to forward spin, but I think particularly in game four, the Dallas Stars gave Minnesota every opportunity to win that game, frankly. Like Jake Ottinger played great. He wasn't out of his mind. I think Minnesota just weren't wasn't getting the bounces. Some of their shots were a little wonky. Um, I mean, certainly, and he made some great saves. And Jake Ottinger is a fantastic goaltender. But also, Dallas didn't look great. Minnesota looked like the better team in game four. And I anticipate that moving forward here. Like, Minnesota is playing the right way. Now, it does bring into mind, you know, you're speaking of penalty kill. Those penalties coming off of absolutely freaking egregious non-existent penalty calls like Marcus Foligno obviously very heated post game for getting two of those penalties one an interference when he's just going in for a regular old hit not interfering at all with the play and the other one tripping after he falls down and his stick gets tangled like absolutely not to and mention as he's sitting in that penalty box you literally can see blood dripping down yes, his head like, like Absolutely ridiculous. And I mean, normally you can whine and bitch and certainly they did the same thing to Dallas. I think they had turned around and gave like a makeup call, another interference, which was a trash interference call. Like the officiating this first round has been bad and I don't know why. And I think game four, it really stuck out because that impacted the game. They get those two power play goals. That is the difference maker. And one of those coming off of Felino's penalty, like it's not okay and Felino, I'm sure I might get in a little bit of trouble for calling the the officials arrogant because it was like anytime an official steps in and changes the outcome of the game that is a problem and I think mm -hmm. this is my again my plea make the officials accountable make them have to talk to us after the game like what what did you see here why did you call a freaking interference for the most part especially in game four 
the refs have pocketed their whistles, which I love. That's freaking playoff hockey, but so is hits. And so is physical play. And they're removing some of that. Just, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. There's no consistency to it. It's frustrating. It's annoying. But that being said, penalty kill needs to be better. Special teams needs to be better. Um, Kirsten, who do you think the unsung hero is thus far? We at, we talked about this at during our last episode uh, as far as when they where they were at in the series when Minnesota was down 2-1. to one. Who has really, again, impressed you so far? Uh, obviously, Jules Erickson Eck being out has lent its way for... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He hasn't even started skating. Well, I, after Friday night, I... Here's the thing with that. I was so excited. I literally grabbed my co-host's arm and screamed when I saw Jewel was starting. Like, I was so excited. And that was how I found out Jewel was starting. Because I wasn't on Twitter. I was just in my own world getting ready. following for- Jesse Pierce, Jesse underscore Pierce. No, yeah. no. Uh, this time I wasn't because there wasn't time. I was doing my own game day stuff. So I found out, like, naturally, like, with the crowd, like, Jewel's back. I tweeted about it. I'm like, Jewel is back. And I'm so happy and then all of a sudden I have these tweets like that didn't last long and then find out first shift 19 seconds on the ice back down the tunnel so you hate to see that and the unfortunate thing is it's playoffs you know guys are really pushing themselves they're rushing their recovery and Jewel absolutely no exception he wanted to be out playing and it was reported googling ways for fast recoveries and so I love that from him I love that he was doing everything he could but unfortunately we are where we are, and we're probably not going to see him again this season, which really sucks. Waiting for that. Uh, speaking of injuries, then, too, Joe Pavelski is skating as of today, making a return out of cus- concussion protocol. I forget what the actual, I think he'd be cleared. I think he just needs a week off, right? Or is it 10 days? Something like that. I want to say it was a week. I don't think 10 days. It's a, It's probably a week. You're right, especially during the playoffs, right? So he is skating. He is making the turn. I think that is where it would have been really nice to see the Minnesota Wild be up 3-1 to in this series right now. Minnesota has never been up 3-1 in a series in franchise history, which it shouldn't shock me as much as it does, but it does shock me. But, I mean, them getting Joe Pavelski back will obviously be huge. Tyler Sagan has done everything in in, uh, Pavelski's absence, but... Just what is the Wild's plan to contain Tyler Sagan? Especially after game four, he had six shots, two of them being power play goals. What is the plan to contain Tyler Sagan? I mean, that's a great question, right? Like, what what do they need to do? I think, again, though, the, that's on your penalty kill. He scores on the penalty. Not to say that he's, you know, irrelevant elsewhere on five-on-five five hockey, but your penalty kill needs to to get their, again, their bleep together. It's just kind of, it's a tough go. Um, I think the other big problem I'm having with Minnesota thus far in the series, at least from that game four and something that needs to change, looking at game five, looking at game six back here in St. Paul, um, possibly a game seven, which I predicted. So let's go, but uh, get that in there. Just a little reminder. That's fine. I hope it goes to seven Great games. Hockey no, even better. I hope we clinch game six on home ice. That's the best case scenario. Dude, that Friday crowd was rocking. You can only, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be the same for game six. Mm-hmm. I can't good. wait. Can't wait. Um, oh. No, is go what? Oh, I was I was just going to completely change the subject because I remembered just now I was too busy on a rant about Jewel that I didn't answer your question. You didn't answer the question. You had to have me completely segue completely. No, I'm sorry. I was you brought up Jewel. And then, of course, obviously, naturally, I go down a rabbit hole complaining as I have all season just in the trenches standing up for this man. Well, not even standing up for him. Everyone loves him. You know, no, we're going to stick with this. I've I've refigured it out. I'll pretend I didn't ask you that question at all. Um, (laughs) We'll stick with the acting. You're missing Jewel Erickson X net front presence. And I think that's what you really missed in game four. That's something that needs to change. Again, Jake Ottinger played great, played good. I don't, I don't necessarily think that was all Ottinger. And certainly Dallas again played poorly. So Jake Ottinger was without question their best player because he Dallas, I did not think played incredibly well. They got some good bounces. They got again some uh some odd man advantages and a couple rushes, but Minnesota had the same opportunities. But I think it was missing that net front presence. There were quite a few freaking rebounds that were plopping out right in front, just like how Dallas had scored a couple of theirs. You need that body in there. You need somebody there. And obviously that's a Jewel Eric's neck thing. Now I, I love Brandon Duhame's game last night. I thought he did a tremendous job really fighting for space in front of the net. Um, you know, he was one that particularly stuck out to me, 
but I just, I need more of that. I need more. And again, I know it's not easy. I'm not pretending to be all. That's probably another content that we're going to do. Kirsten is me trying to get net front presence. Maybe I'll go up against, I don't know, Sunquist or something like that and see what happens. But I just, that was one thing I think that was missing. You need to get those greasy goals. You need to get those gritty goals. You need to get in those areas. And that's something that Jewel Erickson is king of. So that's where you really are missing it. Now, should we circle back on that question that you completely ignored? Yes. Um, you okay. need that punchable face. So again, if the wild need me to step in, that's what I'm here for. Um, that's the only thing I can do to really support Jewel during this time. Um, but yes, so unsung <laughs> hero for the wild. I think I have two. I think I have two okay, and it I'll allow one it. might be a little bit more surprising than the other. I think we both agree. Gustav Nyquist has been fantastic. Yes. I've loved everything that he's brought. So I don't know if it's necessarily unsung hero, but I've been loving everything he's been doing anytime he's out on the ice. The other one, John Klingberg. And again, Ooh. maybe he's not so much unsung, but I don't think people expected him to be doing as well as he has been considering how his game was towards the end of the regular season. But He's he's really come up for the wild so far in the playoffs. I mean, sure, he's had his moments, but I think overall he's really showed up when the wild have needed him to. So he's been somebody I've been, you know, a little back and forth on. But I think overall he's been he's been pretty good. I don't hate that. I yeah, I would agree with I no, actually, I don't agree with that. Another thing about it. Klingberg's been fine to me. He's uh, he's been fine. He had a really good game. In game four, I agree, Gus Nyquist, for sure. Everything is advertised. I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Marcus Felino. I was calling for his head. I was calling for him to be hanging out with us in the press box um, from game one to now. He has been everywhere on the ice in the right way. Again, that heavy body, those heavy hits, um, even punching in a couple, you know, a goal here and there. Like it just, I like the game from Marcus Felino. Marcus Felino is the type of player that is built for the playoffs. He is exactly the type of guy that you need in the playoffs and he's proving that. And so again, I guess I don't know if he's an unsung hero per se, but I think he is doing all the right things. And he is that true grit first mentality that the Minnesota wild have that they need to have. I think he is kind of my unsung hero thus far. And I mean, credit to him. He's keeping his cool for the most part, which as we all know, we have seen Felino can come unhinged and it is terrifying. I mean, he goes black see. and it's just, you're getting bad penalties, but that's the other thing. Like, I think that's what's so frustrating about those penalty calls on Felino in particular is like, but he's not doing it in a bad manner. Like, again, like mm-hmm. their play, they're not undisciplined penalties from anybody on the Minnesota wild squad. Like they've been playing really, really smart for the most part. And I think that's huge knowing how bad that penalty kill can be. I mean, I think that's been really great. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about the guys that maybe. I don't want to say disappeared, but we haven't seen just yet and how them getting going can obviously bode well for Minnesota. So quick break. We'll be right back. You guys, the NHL playoffs are crazy. And so is my schedule. I've got late nights at the XL Energy Center surrounded by pizza and mini donuts. It can make a girl go a smidge hungry, but that's why I am so grateful for my team of experts at Livia who are keeping me on track and supporting my goals in my weight loss journey. To date, you guys, I have lost nearly 20 pounds in just four and a half weeks by creating a food schedule with plenty of different options to have me fueled for those long playoff games ahead. I could not be more thrilled to be on this journey than I am with Livia. Plus, if you join right now, you'll get three months absolutely free. Do not wait for the buzzer to sound on this deal. Call Livia today at 8555-GO-LIVIA. That's 1-855-465-4832. Let them know Jesse Pierce and the Bar Down Beauty sent you. And can't wait to hear all about your weight loss journey with Livia. All right, we're back. Let's talk a little bit about 97. Let's talk a little bit about 12 Minnesota Wilds, Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Boldy. I'm not here to dog on them. I don't think this is a full Kevin Fiala magic trick. I've now disappeared act. Um, It just, it is like, it's, you know, that they're trying and they're out there doing the right things. Eventually, Kirsten, these pucks have to start going in for them, right? You would think so. I mean, it's a matter of time for both of them. I will say it it has been a little disappointing and especially just from my perspective, me being down really close up to the fans, just kind of overhearing some of like their cheers. And sometimes we know the fans aren't always the most practical, but like even kind of hearing a little bit of frustration from them in game, like, come on, Kirill, like we need you, like 
you know, overhearing stuff like that. And so it's, it is a matter of time until one of them does hit the back of the net, but it's been pretty quiet for both of them overall. I mean, they're not pointless by any means They're They've made it on the score sheet, but not in the ways that we would have expected, especially in the playoffs. Well, exactly. And I think it's so great that you are getting the balance scoring that you're seeing from the Minnesota wild, right? Like you are getting that, but also again, this is the point in time where those heavy minute guys, those top guys are supposed to turn up now. Granted, yes, they're getting double teamed, right? You have their, the Dallas stars are aware of what those two players in particular can bring. But yeah, I just, you have to imagine it's gotta be, I don't want to say frustrating for them because certainly as Dean Evison will tell us time and time again, it's the Minnesota Wild. Whoever scored, we just want the Wild to score. We don't care who it is. But yeah, a guy like Kirill Kaprizov, him getting a goal is is huge. Or a guy like Matt Boldy getting a goal, getting things going, playing their way. Now, again, I think they've been playing great. I think they've been playing very well. I just, I'd like to see them rewarded for that play. And again, it just, it, it tends to trickle down then, right? If you've got Kirill going, he gets on this heater. You got Boldy going, he's on a heater. It's good things. Good things will happen when you score goals, when your good players score goals. Not to say, I mean, yeah. I think in Kaprizov's case, it'd be easier to get going if you don't have somebody, <laughs> a suitor taking cheap shots on you <laughs> in the crease. That might help out a little bit too. But, you know, just saying, just throwing that out there. We chatted with Suter a couple days ago uh, about the fans, uh, how he's public enemy number one. And he just kind of smirked and didn't really say anything. The funny thing is he has been this guy, right? Like apparently I don't know that I ever noticed it when he played for the well, but why would you, right? Like you're not going to be looking out for that stuff. Um, yeah. And those are things that need you, the refs need to watch. I haven't seen Suter doing as much of it. And I guess a credit to you fans for really just <laughs> giving it to suits every it, single time. I'm not going to lie. Like, yes, Players, they deal with the chirps. They deal with it. In Suter's case, I feel like it's getting to him a little bit, especially game four. We're going to talk about it because mainly I thought it was just incredible. Like the Wild really playing off the fans. Suter sucks. The jersey is stomping on the jerseys. On the video board, Suter on the bench. Boos. Go to Nordy. Back to Suter. Boos. The look on Suter's face, he looked pissed there's no way after seeing his facial expression during that you can't tell me it's not bugging him when he comes back to Minnesota and that's what he's been getting constantly every single time he touches the puck just suitor sucks boo like after a little bit it's gotta get in your head just a little and for him I think it's really pissing him off yeah I mean they can hear everything right and so that's certainly you know he's hearing it it's just but he's used to it because Nashville did it Every time the one with Nashville, I just never understood. It was like, I don't, they just move on. Right. Like right now it's still kind of fresh. And yes, it's not because he is no longer with Minnesota. It's because of those hits against our superstar number one player. But yeah, it's just shout out to you fans. I need that energy in game six, Kirsten. I did feel like game four felt very much like a Sunday early evening game. Now, Friday, West seventh was popping off, probably starting at like five with a nine o'clock puck drop. People were feeling good, but you could feel the energy and and having Jewel Eric's neck back too. That was huge. The moment, I mean, everything, it just felt that I need that energy yeah. for game six. I need it again, which I think yeah. we'll get it right. It's a Friday. Oh, we'll get it. I absolutely, absolutely. I think we're going to be getting it on Friday night, but I agree with you. The Sunday night crowd, it was still loud. There was still energy, but not anything like Friday night's cloud crowd. There was a mm-hmm. big difference. I think part of it was, it was such a close game up until that third period, mm-hmm. I really think like the fans probably were just feeling a little bit of tension, but also going back to Friday night and maybe there's nothing to it, but I find it hard to believe it didn't add like a little extra motivation. Mason Shaw coming up doing that. Let's play hockey call. I know the guys it. didn't know about it beforehand. So there's, I just feel like that added like something extra special Friday night as well. Bring it for game six. Kirsten, how do you think, this next game five goes now. Do you still feel confident having now? I think we have a good sample size, right? You've seen different types of games. You've seen the low score. You see the double overtime for game one. You see a blowout by Dallas in game two. You see a blowout by the wild in game three in another pretty tight, closely contested game uh, for game four. Seeing this, 
How do we feel? Is Minnesota going to advance to the second round for the first time since 2015? Are we going to do it? Are they going to do it in six? Are they going to do it in seven? What is your prediction as of right now with the uh, four game sample size? I feel like I still need to be the pessimist because so far it's been going well for me where I've been pleasantly surprised and therefore happy. But like, if I change the course now and I'm just like such an optimist, like we're going to do it, then I'm going to be super disappointed if we don't. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what to do. I think I will say, I think the wild needed to be blown out in game two. Cause I think that gave them a reality check that they needed to get their shit together. Sorry, mm -hmm. Fred, cut that out. Um, leave that in there. Or that too. I don't care. I'm not the one that's going to care. Um, and then also, I think that they needed to have that super close game in game four and kind of feel that frustration because hopefully in Dallas, it'll play out in their favor. They'll win it. I will say this. I don't think Dallas is also going to win three straight. Something's going to give. And I'm really hoping it'll give in the Wild's favor. I'm really hoping the Wild will come back in Dallas, take game five, return home game six. We get that electric crowd and end up clinching on home ice ideal scenario i'm gonna keep that in my head i'm gonna try to be an optimist for once and say that's what's gonna happen <laughs> all right so the wild are going to win yes Seriously. game six they're gonna game win the six. next two straight okay i still think I we're getting seven I, I think we're getting seven games i think the wild will win um I mean, Pavelski coming back is is obviously a game changer, right? Like, see what that does for the Dallas offense. Because the same way that the Minnesota Wild fan base felt about Jewel Eric's next return, the Dallas fan base is going to feel that way if he comes back for game five, which, again, if he's skating today, I imagine it's a, a distinct possibility that he does. Um, but I still do. I think th here's the thing. And I was saying this yesterday because this is the classic Minnesotan in me. Yesterday, I'm at the rink and I'm like, you know what? I feel good about this. I feel good about the Minnesota wild. I didn't say this is a different team. This is a different year, but I just was like, I feel good. And then there was that part of me that's like, no, you're not allowed to feel good. And I hated nope. that. I have to hate the good feelings because I'm like, I just, mm -hmm. then that means there's belief and that means there's hope. And you know, it's much more, there's much more painful ways for the Minnesota wild to bow out of the series than ending it. Yeah. In, in games. Like I just, it'll have to go to game seven. I still think they'll win, but I don't know. It just, I hate, I hate being positive about it because I hate, I need, positive. I need the wild to win. And if everyone wants to see me in sparkly green boots, the wild need to win because I'm, they, I'm only buying them if they make it to the second round. So that seems fair. Yeah, that seems fair. All right. You guys would love to know what you think. Shout out also to everybody that was there taking part in our hype video. Loved it. So much fun even when we were freezing cold out there, even when things got a little weird with people, uh, we had a grand old time. We also had a grand old time doing a little smelling salts. Thank you to soda stick for, for popping those over to us and Ward smelling salts. That was fun. I did them again, Kirsten in the press box before I wrote my story. Why? I'm not convinced I did it right. I'm not, I feel like there should have been more pain. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you right now. Like, I think I didn't go in hard enough. I should have listened to Revo. I should have gone in harder. I didn't. And I think that I, I, I'm guessing that I didn't go all the way. And I think he, he needs to show you how to do them. I don't think he, we should have just asked him like, Hey, come here and just do this with, that would have been way better content for those that have. didn't catch it. We were down in the bowels of the arena yesterday doing those smelling salts that have this really cool Grim Reaver. Go check out our social media uh, for that video. But Ryan Reeves happened to be right there doing some of his warm up. So naturally, I had to show him the smelling salts. And then naturally, we told him we were very nervous about doing it. And he's like, no, you got to go in hard. And I was like, you literally almost threw up. He's like, yeah, but that was just one time. And I was like, but people don't forget that. Like, that's a one you're somebody that does this all the time and you almost threw up. What's it going to do to people like us uh, that don't do it that often? I already was about to have an anxiety attack. Like my heart was racing. There's no way I, I got a good whiff. I was good. Yeah, it was good. I'm probably going to do some more. Maybe I'm addicted now. <laughs> what happened I, to Jesse? I don't know. She got really into smelling salts. <laughs> this is just taking wrong turns. Just saying. Just whatever keeps you going, whatever can keep you For moving. You, smelling salts. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. There are worse things to snort at my nose, I'm sure. 
<laughs> all right guys that's gonna do it for this week's episode again thank you for hanging out with us shout out to talk north for featuring us on their network for livia i am loving my livia weight loss journey in case you guys haven't checked it out I'm looking stealth i'm looking summer ready uh nearly 20 pounds down absolutely love it it's been tremendous love the support that livia has been giving me in this journey so be sure to let them know bar down beauties and uh, Jesse Pierce sent you if you're ready to drop a couple pounds like I am. Um, also, shout out to Soda Stick. Always got the merch getting you ready, geared up for the playoffs, whether it's the Wolves or the Wild, because the Wolves are still doing their thing, I guess. So that's cool. Uh, also, what shout out thought, to Grain. Not me. Nobody, nobody. Literally nobody. Uh, shout out to Grain Belt. Cheers to you. Jim Beam, another cheers, but in the whiskey version. And also Royal Credit Union. Less fee, more free. We will have another new episode next week. Whatever happens in this round, it'll be whatever. Whatever this round ends is when we will drop our next new episode. So bear with us. I know we've always prided ourselves on our consistency of Monday release, but that's playoffs, baby. That's what we do. That's what we're going to do. And yeah, have a great rest of your week and go wild. This podcast is made possible due to listeners like you. Thank you.